For the past 50 years across the western United States in the cattle regions of our land, there have been multiplied thousands of cattle mutilations, and it's on the increase. Gary Stimmon is here to discuss with me obscene sacrifices. JR, today we're going to look into a topic <clears throat> that's very, very bizarre. When you get into the UFO world, uh, you're touching on the bizarre no matter what part of it you happen to be studying. But in the world of cattle mutilations, which have definitely been documented in the UFO phenomenon, uh, you begin to get into a strange, even bizarre uh, set of rituals. And uh, when you study the rituals, they seem to have very strong primitive roots, uh, meaning they go back, they go back into history. And JR, the thing that, that I always try to do when I study the UFO phenomenon is to put it in a biblical perspective. In other words, how will the Bible help us to understand what in the world is going on? These thousands of cattle have been literally picked up, carved upon in various ways, mutilated, and then dropped and left for dead. Many of them, uh, like a recent case in Colorado, are prize bulls. Now, this uh, prize bull is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And, and there's a case uh, in recent, that recently happened in Colorado in 1999 where a prize bull was within 100 feet of a rancher's house. He and his wife were sleeping with the windows open. They got up the next morning. Their prize bull had been mutilated. It was stone cold dead. Many of its parts were missing. It was lying there. There was not a drop of blood left in that bull, nor was there a drop of blood anywhere on the ground. Uh, an autopsy revealed that its heart had been excised without destroying the pericardial sac, that is the membrane around the heart. And the more they looked at it, the more they realized that this was a very strange happening. Now, a number of sheriff's departments have suggested the possibility that cult groups, satanic groups, mm -hmm. were performing these ritual sacrifices. It's certainly not um, out of character for such groups to, right. uh, to sacrifice animals. But in the case of these cattle you're referring to, uh, it just seems to be humanly impossible for there to be absolutely no blood and no footprints and no disturbing around the, right. uh, around the ground. Um, and, and so there are others who believe that it is the occupants of UFOs. Mm -hmm. I want to read to you a verse of scripture from Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, where God says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. This is a very strange verse of scripture. But from this comes the admonition not to drink blood. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is something here, something perhaps even esoteric about this statement, Gary. Something that suggests that the blood of an animal is much more powerful in its shall we say, spiritual consequences than we usually give it credit for being. We all know that the life of the flesh is in the blood physically. Uh, we know about the Red Cross and blood banks and blood drives and how blood keeps people alive. But on the spiritual plane, there seems to be a thirst for blood that goes back thousands of years, both for good and for evil. And this is the amazing thing. You can go all the way back to Cain's acceptable sacrifice. And God found that sacrifice of the little lamb to be acceptable. Now, we know that God uh, says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But on the other hand, pagan uh, religions mm -hmm. also uh, use sacrifices. That yes. was the god Molech, mm -hmm. for example, who required the sacrifice of children. And this god, uh, this idol god, was in the Hinnom Valley, the Kahina Valley, just uh, runs along the south side of the Temple Mount in Old Jerusalem. That's right. And uh, by the way, the sacrifice that was due to Molech could be cattle, it could be lambs, but uh, Molech uh, loved the blood of little babies. And uh, parents in, in these, these elaborate rituals would bring their 
their firstborn even and, and hurl into a flaming statue uh, which was fired with wood and made of bronze so that it was just absolutely uh, red hot. The, the, uh, the sacrifice would be immediately consumed, flesh, bones, blood, and all. But essentially what we're talking about is blood sacrifice. Baal, uh, the Old Testament Baal, who came out of the, uh, the religion of Babylon, <clears throat> required blood sacrifice. And he was very thirsty for blood. Uh, and this is recorded in a number of places in the Old Testament. There's no doubt about it. Well, J.R., as I began looking at the modern phenomenon of cattle mutilations, I first asked myself, who's doing the mutilating? And it has to be the dark side. In other words, we've concluded before that uh, this contemporary UFO phenomenon resembles demonic activity as described in the Bible. The great battle in the heavens. Well, if it's the demons doing this thing, then what they're doing today is exactly what they were doing back in the days of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. In other words, only the characters have changed. The activity is still the same. Now, there are mutilations going on today, and there have been some who have actually seen UFOs involved in mm -hmm. this mutilation of cattle. Could you give us a story or two? Well, as a matter of fact, in, uh, even as we speak right now, in western Oregon and western Washington state, uh, which are both cattle raising regions near Bend, Oregon and in the Snohomish Valley of Washington, there have been literally dozens of cattle mutilations reported in the last uh, um, six months. Yeah. Now, these mutilations uh, were described by a rancher, who, one rancher who lives near Bend, Oregon in an old travel trailer out near his cattle uh, has recently described how he sees what he calls glowing discs come in at night, levitate his cattle, carve on them, and then drop them. And sometimes from two, three hundred feet, and what you end up with is a, is a cow that's the, just a heap of rubble, basically. But there's never any blood around it. All the blood has been drained, and, and various organs have been excised, the tongue, the eyes, uh, sometimes the genitalia, the tail of the animal, various parts and pieces are taken. This thing is dropped unceremoniously when they're through with it. And uh, in one case, uh, that's very well documented, uh, a ran this same rancher uh, took uh, a gentleman over to see, a, again, a prize bull, which had apparently had been dropped from a couple of hundred feet. And the, what the weight uh, of it hitting the ground had caused it to sink half half of the uh, the distance of the bull halfway into the ground. It had fallen from such a great height. Other times, cattle are actually found in the treetops. 200 feet would be like a 20-story building, wouldn't it? Yes. And so you find these animals that have been stolen, kidnapped, drained of all their blood and some organs, uh, and dropped. Sometimes dropped from a great height. Now, there's one story in the article that you've written for our next magazine mm -hmm. about a young man who was abducted by a UFO mm -hmm. and was allowed to see a cattle mutilated. As a matter of fact, this young man ha also happens to live in near Bend, Oregon. Uh, he reported that he was abducted. He was taken by his abductors out in a field uh, where he was f literally forced he was held by whatever power he was unable to say. He was held and forced to watch a cow being lifted up into a glowing disc uh, where, while it was still alive and screaming and kicking, parts of it were carved off, the blood was, uh, was drained out of it, and it was dropped back to the ground, at which, time, at which point he was returned to his apartment. Now, he says that he thinks somebody wanted him to see this and report on it, tell other people what was going on. Again, it's a bizarre ritual. Uh, it has its uh, roots that go all the way back into the 50s. And in a minute, we're going to read some interesting quotes from a gentleman who was intimately connected with our government at the top levels in the 1950s. And what he tells is really scary. It is. Well, we have this passage in Leviticus about the life being in the blood. 
And of course, our Lord required an animal sacrifice, never a human sacrifice, until Jesus came and presented himself as the ultimate sacrifice for the atonement of our sins. And we do not understand all of the spiritual ramifications or the esoteric meanings behind this. All we know is that God required a blood sacrifice from the days of Adam, uh, when he clothed Adam and Eve with coats of skin until the days of Calvary and the second Adam himself pre prevented, presented himself as a sacrifice. We'll get into more of these mutilations in just a moment. In February 1999, 14 tree planters witnessed a UFO abduction of an elk. Gary, tell us about it. These are forestry workers uh, uh, working in Washington State near Mount St. Helens, uh, and uh, they're, they're planting trees uh, for Weyerhaeuser. Uh, and as they planted trees up on a hillside, they saw down below them in the valley a herd of elk, and descending toward the herd of elk, what looked at first to them like a parachute. And they thought, well, it was a skydiver going to land in the valley. But then they noticed that this thing was not descending in the way things, things usually descend, but rather it appeared to be flying down. And it came close to the ground near the herd of elk. The herd then stampeded, and this thing zeroed in on one of the elk. And uh, here on the Mutual uh, UFO Network journal cover is a picture of the artist's conception of uh, this thing, the way they saw it, descending down above the herd of elk. Uh, it levitated this elk and proceeded then to struggle skyward. And they reported that, that they, they could actually see this thing struggling with the extra weight of the animal. Uh, and uh, it finally maintained control after almost running into some trees and, and climbed away at about a 45 degree angle with the elk dangling below it and disappeared into some clouds. Now, JR, this is routine stuff for UFO investigators. That is to say, Animal abductions and mutilations are becoming so common that they are routinely reported. Now, before you call us crazy, listen to one of the men who was an advisor to uh, President, Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, who was involved at Roswell. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he writes a book before he dies. Yes, before he's recently uh, passed away. His name is Colonel Philip Corso. They've written a book entitled The Day After Roswell, in which he documents his lifetime uh, involvement with uh, U the UFO phenomenon and the traces, the parts and pieces that were left over from the Roswell crash. Which now, first of all, he says that it was an alien craft. Absolutely. He? And with bodies. With bodies. And in the years <clears throat> since, we have gleaned technology from the aliens. Now, this man was a, a, a member of President Eisenhower's National Security Council, former head of the Foreign Technology Desk at the U.S. Army's Research and Development Department. And I want to read a couple of quotes from Colonel Philip Corso. This man's a personal friend of Ike Eisenhower. He wrote, Corso writes this, It was the UFOs, alien spacecraft thinking themselves invulnerable and invisible as they soared around the edges of our atmosphere, swooping down at will to destroy our communications uh, with electromagnetic pulse bursts, buzz our spacecraft, colonize our lunar surface, mutilate cattle in their own horrendous biological experiments, and even abduct human beings for their own medical tests. Elsewhere, he writes, in the Pentagon from 1961 to 1963, I reviewed field reports from local and state police agencies about the discoveries of dead cattle whose carcasses looked as though they had been systematically mutilated and reports from people who claimed to have been abducted by aliens and experimented upon. Now, J.R., uh, we're not talking about a, a, a crazy here. This is Colonel Corso, aide to Dwight D. Eisenhower working at the highest levels of the government and through the Freedom of Information Act, uh, he was able to extricate certain uh, detailed doc documents that, that enabled him to put together this book, which is heavily documented. The man has all of the marks of credibility and 
he speaks about cattle mutilations in a routine fashion. Now, the difference between Philip Corso and myself on this subject is that he believes these are aliens from outer space. I take the biblical view that these are demons masquerading as space aliens who are doing what demons have always done since the days of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Now, They're Gary, mimicking God's own activities. Uh, Gary, according to uh, this man, mm -hmm. Philip Corso, our government has a deal going with the aliens. They have actually signed a covenant with, with these uh, people, but it's as hard as it sounds to believe, that covenant involving technology transfer. That's basically the thrust of this book, that, uh, that our government has allowed these people to freely operate within our airspace in exchange for technological developments which they have given us. Now what technology does he say well, we have gleaned from these aliens? He says that they've given us integrated circuit chips all the way back to the early 50s. Uh, the transistor that was the first one. Uh, fiber optics. Uh, they gave us lasers. They gave us super tenacity poly, uh, polymers uh, and super tenacity fibers which are stronger than steel. And by the way, uh, that's not all. Uh, certain energy production devices, which are still top secret, have been given to us. Mm. Now, for our government to make a covenant with these people mm -hmm. actually means that our government has a covenant with the dark side. Absolutely. Explain. Well, the dark side, if in fact these are fallen angels and they're demonic servants who are material, materializing and posing, as I believe, as space aliens, uh, then literally our leaders have covenanted with the same people uh, who covenanted, let's say, with the ancient government of Ahab in Israel. Uh, the, uh, the leaders of ancient Israel knew the truth. They knew about Jehovah being the one true God, and they knew about his system of worship and sacrifice. And yet they built altars uh, to Baal and to Molech. Why? Because they believed in some strange way that they could get a blessing from Baal and Molech that would be superior to the one that they got from God. And I believe that, that the leaders of our government are seeking the same, if you will, the same blessing, quote unquote, uh, which comes in the form of technology, etc. Superiority over the enemy. Uh, and, and in exchange, uh, these, these uh, UFO aliens are being allowed to run rampant uh, across our country. We can go back to 1 Kings chapter 18 and the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal to see uh, the use of the sacrifice for both sides, yes. both God and this idol called Baal. For Elijah uh, put them to the test had altars built for uh, God and for, shall we say, the devil, mm -hmm. and had the uh, priests of Baal, the devil uh, in disguise or whatever, put a bullock on their altar and they prayed all day for fire to come down from the sky and consume their sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen, did it? It did not happen. Instead, the fire of God came down uh, when Elijah prayed and took the sacrifice. Now, J.R., the fire from heaven is very much, to me, a metaphor of the contemporary UFO phenomenon. There's false fire, if you will. But when one of these things materializes in flaming fire, it oftentimes could be described as fire from heaven. And one of the, the odd things about these cattle mutilations is they're often surrounded by ashy material uh, sometimes the ground appears to have been scorched and burned as though by some kind of strange fire. And uh, I think in the Old Testament days, this would have been called fire from heaven. Today, it's called UFOs. Strange fire. Strange. Are we talking about the Shekinah glory? And a counterfeit thereof. In other words, God's glory is the true glory, but Satan uh, surrounds himself as an angel of light. And he's also called the prince of the power of the air, by the way. We shouldn't overlook that. And he brings his strange fire to bear upon humanity. And what, what this is involving is a modern reenactment of the sacrifice of blood 
uh, to Baal and to Molech. And by the way, J.R., we should quickly point out that it's not just Israel. Uh, the Greeks had their false sacrifices, the Romans. The Babylonian mystery religion, which was practiced by both the Greeks and the Romans, involved bloodletting from a bull yes. and uh, the showering of fresh blood upon uh, people who were initiated into the religion. Uh, the cults of the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incans on this side of the, the ocean involved ancient blood sacrifices, ripping the hearts out of human beings, sacrificing thousands of animals for their blood. Now, Gary, with the mutilation of animals proliferating today, mm -hmm. how does it fit into the prophetic picture of the coming Antichrist, yeah. world government, tribulation period, and the second coming of Christ? Well, you know, J.R., uh, it's very strange to me that in uh, Revelation 13, where the beast is described, the man we call the Antichrist, he's able to call down fire out of heaven. And J.R., I believe this is the very phenomenon we're discussing today, this strange alien fire. Uh, the, it's going to be, shall we say, the power behind the Antichrist's throne. We're seeing uh, events unfold today which could lead directly to the tribulation. It may not be far off. In other words, in the realm of the spiritual, there is a God and there is a devil. On which side are you? The devil takes his sacrifice. God's already given his. It's Jesus. We'll be back in just a moment. Cattle mutilations are becoming more prolific today. Gary, what does the devil want with blood? J.R., I think he wants with blood what he has always wanted. Uh, it's a biblical truth that there is power in the blood. As humans, we don't fully understand what's going on on the other side of the veil. There is a massive uh, contest. Uh, Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. J.R., I don't know what they do with that blood when they take it over to the other side, but every, in every case, there has never been an exception in a cattle mutilation. The beast is drain, fully drained of gallons and gallons of blood. They take it and they do something with it. My answer to your question would be, we probably don't want to know what it is they're doing with it, but it's certainly obscene and probably on the order of a dark, occultic, sacrificial practice, which is utterly forbidden by God and will one day be dealt with by him firsthand. In the stories we have read of the, in the past of Dante's Inferno, uh, Flavius Josephus' picture of hell, uh, there is torture, continual torture upon the unbeliever. I wonder if maybe <laughs> these fellows that, take, that mutilate cattle are going to be mutilating people. Mm. Wow. It's a dark thought. I tell you what, you need to know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. I'd hate to go to hell and have to find out the hard way, wouldn't yes. you? So trust Him today, will you? Jesus is the only way to glory and uh, joy forever. This is J.R. Church and Gary Stearman. Until next time, keep looking up. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported ministry sponsored by our many friends across America and in your area. For your gift of $10, you can receive a special edition of our current programs on audio tape. Or for a gift of $20, we'll send you our programs on videotape. For either order, add $3 for shipping and handling. And to order, call the 800 number on your screen right now.